Alright everyone, this is Daishi bringing you the greatest game you've never played, Mad Maze, which was originally available for the Prodigy internet service system in the 90s, which many people did not have. Actually, I think in America it was the first or second largest internet service for a while, and then of course you have AOL that comes in and sort of kicks everyone else's butts right out of the internet scene for at least a few years before broadband really kicks in. Um, I'm going to jump right into it. I love this game, and I'm hoping that you love it too. I'm just taking a look through. Oh, there's this. I guess this is a list of people who've completed the game. All right, how do I get out of here? All right. So what I want to do is I want to go through the introduction, and then we'll actually jump into the maze. Wythe Village, your home. All your life you've lived in the village of Wythe. It is a bucolic place, peopled by men and women of good cheer. The land is bounteous, and the local wine excellent. The people are even-tempered and kind to their children. One day, as the planting season comes to an end, Waylon, the village elder, summons you for an audience. You know him to be responsible, kindly, and thoughtful. He rules the village not by force, but because others defer to his wisdom. After the usual exchange of pleasantries, Waylon comes to the point. These are perilous times for our people. He whose name is not spoken walks this earth again, and with him the spawn of chaos. He whose name? But that's a story told to frighten children, you exclaim. Waylon sighs and fixes his gaze on you. The monsters who slaughter our cattle are no children's story, nor the blood that oozes from the village wall, ugh, nor the sudden encouragement of the mad maids on our lands. And, my rash young friend, you will come to fear the mad one, whose name you must never speak. Your parents, alas, spoke truly. He whose name is not spoken is an immortal. Yet he is unlike the others who made our world, for he is born not of the fires of creation, but of primal chaos. Like others of his kind, he has many avatars. He is trickster, master of good and evil, and also chaos, bringer of death and destruction. He is hated and feared. Those who worship him do so to propitiate him, not out of love. Know then that where the Mad Maze now stands once flourished a mighty kingdom, the Mad One sundered it with the stuff of chaos, and planted the evil seed which grew into the Mad Maze. The Mad Maze is an imperfect reflection of the Mad One's fevered consciousness. Inside impenetrable walls of mist are eldritch lands, inhabited by millions of chaos, fantastic creatures, and those few strong in magic. The maze is a realm of shifting shapes and madness. Nothing can be taken for granted there. The laws of nature do not always hold. It is an intrusion of the primal chaos into our own ordered world. The hairs on the nape of your neck stand on end. Good lord, Wayland's terrified. Wayland's hair is far more frightening than even the thought of your worst childhood nightmares come true. Pay attention to me, Wayland snaps. You jerk to attention and see the fire in his eyes. This is the Wayland you know. I beg your pardon, sir, you reply. I was thinking, is there anything I can do to help? The elder continues, considers you for a moment, then says, we need a runner. Me, you cry. Waylon nods. But Persephone went into the maze only three months ago. Waylon shakes his head sadly. We've heard not from her. I'm sorry. Were you and she friends? I admired her, you stammer. So did I, he says, but she's gone. I've had my eyes on you for many years, says the elder. You are quick-witted, wit str trustworthy, strong, and I trust brave. If there's anyone in the village better suited to be a runner, I not know who it w may be. Time grows short. We need you to carry a message to the wizard... Morazel, who lives in the very heart of the maze, where he holds the Mad One at bay with his own fell powers. Will you do the deed? Will you be? Will you brave the Mad Maze to save everything you hold dear? You reply, it is my duty. Wonderful, says the Elder Wayland. I'm very proud of you. Your parents are equally proud. Soon you are equipped with the best the village can offer a commoner. A dagger, the Elder's message, plenty of clothing and camping supplies. Tearfully, you bid your friends and family farewell. And thus it's time to enter the Mad Maze. I'll probably be queuing some music to this game. Since um, it's otherwise musicless and voiceless. But still fantastic. Alright, we're entering the maze. We're entering the maze. 
Although it's sure taking its time to load up. I might have to pause the recording. Alright, I'm going to pause it and find out what's going on. Alright, we've gotten into the maze now. I figured out what was wrong. Um, Internet Explorer opens a pop-up window. And then it um, for some reason shuts down everything. But we've gotten it and we're inside the maze. <coughs> Excuse me. So, as we walk in, a wall is closing in behind you. So, we can go left, we can go right. If we go ahead, there's nothing. If we go back, you can see that the wall's closed and there's nowhere for us to go. So, time for us to go for a jaunt. Ooh, I already found... These are called places of power. and They're um, places where um, interesting interactions happen between you and different denizens of the Mad Maze. So let's go ahead and go on inside. You knock on the door of the sage's house. A portly man answers the door. A wayfarer, quotha, quoth he. Enter, enter, and quaff a tankard of ale with me. Oh gods, I don't even want to do these voices. I'll just read it. He pours you a tankard of ale, which you sip politely. He introduces himself as the sage Soreen, and you give him your name as well. Now then, he says, what brings you to these parts? Tell him of your quest. Ah, well, he says, a difficult task you have set yourself. It is said that Morazil lives within the center of the great maze, beyond the third level. Your first task will be to find the exit to this level, where we sit, and that itself will not be easy. You ask where the exit lies. A craftly expression appears on his face. Aha, I believe I can help you on this, but perhaps you can help me too. You see, continues the sage. Near here, there is a well in the forest. The water in the well has certain magical properties, which I find useful in the manufacture of a sovereign remedy against the ache caused by excessive impulation. Alas, in recent weeks, a troll has taken up residence near the well, and I dare visit it no longer. If you would dispose of the troll, I will share all I know with you. I shall cheerfully agree. Good, says the sage. That's settled then. Have some more ale. He asks if there is anything he can give you to help defeat the troll. No, he says thoughtfully. I think not. However, you might want to visit the crone Matilda. She lives not far from here. I believe she has some experience with trolls. You're beginning to get a little woozy from the ale, so you thank the sage and continue on your way. Alright, so... The wall's closing in behind you. So, once you do something, you're basically stuck. Um, like we've left, so we can't go back to him. And... I tend to follow the walls when I'm going through the maze. Um, you should also make a map of the maze if you're going to go through it. You approach Crone Matilda's house. One thing to note about the game is it's actually quite creative. I mean, you don't really see stuff like this um, in modern games. A door opens and a, a crack and the hideous crone looks forth. There's a prominent wart on her nose and her chin is covered with wayward hairs. A fine young dumpling, she cackles and throws the door open. Come in, come in, me tender morsel. Huh. <laughs> Remember a pressing engagement elsewhere. No, we shall enter. The crone sits you down at a rickety chair. You study the stuffed bat that hangs from the ceiling and the melancholy uh, lizard in the cage. The crone begins to throw whole onions, carrots, and less identifiable ingredients, identifiable ingredients into a pot that hangs over a fire. Now, dear, she begins. Tell me of your adventures while I prepare the broth. Um, ask her about what kind of soup she's making. She shrieks with laughter. Young dumpling soup, she cries gaily. Okay. She speaks a magic word and you hurtle from your seat into the pot. It is uncomfortably warm. She pours a ladle of broth over you. Beautiful soup, she croons and pours some salt into the cauldron with you. Now what? I'll ask her about the troll. Cursed troll, she says. Since it took up residence by me, well, I've had to go clear down to the creek to fetch water. Hmm, she says, getting a crafty look in her eyes. You're a gullible, I mean, heroic one, eh? Would you like to live beyond supper time? You assure her that you would. If you agree to rid me of the troll, I'll let you go. Quickly, you agree. The crone helps you from the pot. But how can I defeat a troll, you ask? They are fearsome monsters with large pointy teeth. Matilda lays one bony finger against her nose and winks. No, these two things, she says. Trolls cannot resist a dare, and trolls cannot swim. So, you ask blankly. You figure it out, Matilda says testily. Now be off with you. I'll leave, since I don't want to die. Alright, so now let's take a left. 
and let's go ahead. Like I said, I always just follow the wall whenever I'm going through the maze. And I have a good eye for knowing where I am. Oh, here, ooh, we've made our way to the well. <coughs> you carefully tiptoe up to the well. Before you can peer down the well, a big ugly troll appears. Arrgh! It says, conversationally, displaying large fangs. What do you do? Um, you dare the troll to jump down the well. You dares me, huh? Says the troll. Pretty I do, you say. Indeed, I double dare you. You do, huh? He says. I, you say. Huh, the troll says. I'll show you. He leaps into the well. You peer in after him. He is desperately floundering in the water below, scraping at the slick walls. Eventually he sinks and the last bubbles disappear. A portly man emerges from the surrounding wood. You recognize the sage Sorain who lives in these parts. Bravo, my friend, he says. Bravo. A deed well done. I must thank you for ridding our well of that pest. He peers down the well. However, he says, I fear the decaying body will poison the water. Oh well, perhaps we can fetch it out. He turns to you. Nevertheless, so heroic a deed deserves its reward. I will tell you what little I know that may help you on your quest. Far away in Maze Purpur, he says, lies the Castle Perilous, once the seat of good King Carlin, now whence the usurper Timazel, the Mad Lord's lackey, rules the land. It guards the only entrance to the lower maze. You must brave its perils to succeed in your quest. It is said that Carlon lies in prison in those walls, in an eternal sleep, awaiting a hero who will awaken him, so he may deliver our lands from evil. Perhaps you are that hero. But the Castle Perilous is well guarded. It is said there are secret entrances, but I know no more of that. It is said that only a hero with a magic blade may free King Carlon, but where such a blade may be found I know not, and that, my young friend, is all that I might tell you of these matters. Godspeed, in all haste in thy journey, he points east. <laughs>